But um, 17 Proverbs we're going to do today. Uh, I guess Ray, Kim read yesterday. She, not, she, she said I'm tired, so that means I'm reading today. So you get you get you don't get the you don't get the pretty melodious voice of the Kim Coleman Miller, you know, uh, uh, talking to you today. But I will read. I'm going to read out a message Bible if that's okay uh, with everyone. Or even if it's not, because I'm going to read it. Um, <laughs> so, um, the, the the little subtitle, you know, I have like a subtitle over top of the chapter. The subtitle in the message Bible says, A Whack on the Head of a Fool. Mm. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, it doesn't have one in my other one. Does yours have a subtitle? Wisdom's Virtues and Hurts. All right, so it says, A meal of bread and water in contended peace is better than a banquet spiced with quarrels. A wise servant takes charge of an unruly child and is honored as one of the family. As a silver, as silver in a crucible and gold in a, in a pan, so our lives are assayed by God. Evil people relish malicious conversation. The ears of liars itch for dirty gossip. Whoever mocks poor people insults their creator. Gloating over misfortune is a punishable crime. Yeah. Old people are distinguished by grandchildren. Children take pride in their parents. We don't expect eloquence from fools, nor do we expect lies from our leaders. Receiving a gift is like getting a rare gemstone. Any way you look at it, you see beauty refracted. Overlook an offense and bond a friendship. Fasten on to a slight and goodbye, friend. A quiet rebuke to a person of good sense does not does more than a whack on the head of a fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Criminals out looking for nothing but trouble won't have wait won't have to wait long. Criminals out looking for nothing but trouble won't have to wait long. They'll meet it coming and going. Better to meet a grizzly robbed of her cubs than a fool hell bent on folly. Those who return evil for good will meet their own evil returning. Mm -hmm. The start of a quarrel is like a leak in a dam to stop it before it bursts. I mean, so stop it before it bursts. I'll read that one again. The start of a quarrel is like a leak in a dam. So stop it before it bursts. <laughs> wow. Um, whitewashing bad people and throwing mud on good people are equally abhorrent to God. Wow. What, what's this? Fools out shopping for wisdom? They wouldn't recognize it if they saw it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the 16th Whoa. verse. Your 16th <laughs> Why pay tuition on to educate a fool where he has no intention of acquiring true wisdom? Acquiring true wisdom. Who was that? What verse is that? Okay. I mean, is that passion? Yes. Okay, let me read in this one here. Why is there a hand? Uh, why is there a hand? Why? Is there in the hand of a fool purchase the price. purchase price of wisdom? Wow. Since he has no heart for it. Wow. Okay. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, friends love <laughs> friends, friends love through all kinds of weather, and families stick together in all kinds of trouble. It's stupid to try to get something for nothing or run up huge bills you can never pay. The person who courts sin marries trouble. Build a wall and invite a burglar. Mm. A bad motive can't achieve a good end. Double talk brings you double trouble. Having a fool for a child is misery. It's no fun being the parent of an adult. A, ch a, cheerful a cheerful disposition is good for your health. Gloom and doom leave you bone tired. The wicked take bribes under the table. They show nothing but contempt. Or justice. Mm -hmm. The perceptive find wisdom in their own front yard. Fools look for it everywhere but right here. Wow. A surly, stupid child is sheer pain to a father. A bitter pill for a mother to swallow. What's 25 cents? I was going to say, what is that in another verse? <laughs> a father grieves over the foolishness of his child and bitter sorrows fills his mother. Right. So foolishness, stupidity, foolishness. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so it's wrong to penalize good behavior or make good citizens pay for the crimes of others. Yes, it is. The one who knows much says little. An understanding person remains calm. Even dunces who keep quiet are thought to be wise. As long as they keep their mouths shut, they're smart. What does 28 say in yours? When even a fool bites his tongue, he is considered wise. So shut your mouth when you are provoked. It will make you look smart. Wow. Look, look, look. One of the things I just kind of point out when you read these different verses. So the Message Bible is more poetic and their language is way more direct. Um, so sometimes they use words that we think are like are bad or demeaning words, uh, but that was their interpretation of that word. And <laughs> so, passion is very, you know, passionate. Right. So don't don't um don't uh, I guess what I'm saying is like don't push back or, or rebuke the meaning. Um, it, it's a word. It's another way of describing the thing. Kind of in our cultures, we hear words like when we hear someone say stupid or dumb, we take it as a a negative thing and we push it away. Uh, so I'm not saying it's positive, but I'm not saying that it doesn't have meaning and validity. So um, that's why I like reading the message sometimes because it's like like over the top on you. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so our life application for today is um, we're coming from uh, Proverbs again, 17 chapter. We're going to focus on that second verse. And it says it's not about position. It's about empowerment. It's not about position, it's about empowerment. So before I read it, um, and you can look this up on the internet, um, John Maxwell, John Maxwell, he has um, a thing called five levels of leadership, five levels of leadership. And it, it, it shows you five different uh, iterations or levels uh, of, of leadership and the lowest is position. So, uh, yeah, because that's the easiest to get. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so a position is just a position, it's a title. And, it's, and, and people have to do things because you have that position. You know, if you're the manager or the boss, you know, the parent, whatever, then people have to do things or feel like they have to because of the position. Mm -hmm. And if that's the only reason why people are following a, a, a leader or a person, that's the lowest level of leadership. It really has nothing to do with the person. It has to do with the title or the position. Yeah, it doesn't identify the character. It right. doesn't tell you how they're going to be good in the position, if they're going to be respectful. Right. You know, it's the same thing with our office, some of our officers who have a position and they do not right. behave correctly. It's the same thing in our churches right. with ministers who have a position, yeah. they don't behave correctly. It's the same thing in our homes with I'm parents who are parents who don't behave correctly. Right. Right. It's for anybody. It's your boss at work who has the position of boss, but they do not behave correctly. Right. So you cannot look any further than the fact that that first level is just position. Right. right. That's it. So you don't want to get stuck there. I mean, position, yeah. position is important, but it's not the whole thing of leadership. So after position is relationship. After relationship, That's the good it's the things that you've done. After it's the things that you've done, it's the things that you've done for others. Mm -hmm. And then after it's the things that you've done for others, it's the name, it's it's the brand, it's the, the entity that, that you've now become. Mm -hmm. um, so like, for instance, like a T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. When you hear that name, uh, um, uh, and there's other names that you hear, I just that's the one that just came off my head because Kim said it. Um, if you're anywhere in the United States and you say T.D. Jakes, whether someone who, cont uh, who says they're a believer or not believer, they're probably going to know who he is. Yeah. Right. So he has, he has, he's become an icon, an entity. So it's kind of a, a fifth level leadership. Right. Um, you know, we, we, we just saw, and I'm not offensive of anyone, but in our, our, our last administration in Washington, we saw a positional leader, um, you know, where position was, you know, do what I say, not what I do kind of thing. So just to give you those things today, we we'll to talk about, it's not, um, about position, it's about empowerment. Um, so here's how it reads. It says, our influence has less to do with our position or title than it, than it does with the life we live. Influence is life, like Kim just said, character, not just position. It's not about position, but it's about production. What are you producing? What are you doing? <laughs> what have you done for me lately? <laughs> right? I mean, I say it jokingly, but that's really the truth. Um, it's not the education we get, but the empowerment that we give that makes a difference to others, mm -hmm. right? So the key word is credibility here, right? We gain credibility when our walk matches our talk, 
Mm -hmm. And we synergize both together to add values to others. Yeah. Walk and talk, bring them together so we can add values to others. Not to make ourselves look good. That'll happen as we go, right? Proverbs 17, 2 says that a wise servant will rule over a foolish son and is honored as one of the family. So I want you to, I want you to hear that. A wise servant mm -hmm. will rule over a son. So think of your family, right? I, I'm, I'm a father. I have sons and, and love my sons and, and, and respect them uh, uh, wholeheartedly as, as men. So if there was someone who came in this household, I'm going to say servant, I don't know, someone outside of this household who came in this household and I gave them rule over my sons, um, there would have had to been like a reason. For yeah. That, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's what they're saying. A wise servant, someone on the outside is, is respected more than the son because the son is foolish. Mm -hmm. Still growing, still learning. Right, right. And that person is honored as one as the family. Mm hmm over the son. But the son has the blood and the rights to the thing. Right. So that position at that particular time. Doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that wise person that came in is bringing value mm -hmm. to the place. So the next level of that leadership is on that person's life. Right. And that's what supports and helps to strengthen the family and your son. Exactly. To help him to get where he needs to go. Exactly. Exactly. And we've had some of those that we've allowed to... Right. Right. To mentor in. To mentor in. Mentor in when our kids were young. I'm sure some of you do. You have people right. that you trust right. with your children. Right. You know. Right. So in other words, um, position does not equate to influence. Wisdom does. Mm -hmm. So we want to examine the five C's that we're about to tell you. And we want, we want you to ask yourself the following questions that go with these five C's mm -hmm. um, to determine whether your tendency, whether your tendency, your bend, your tendency, your natural reflex um, it, it, it's not good or bad. It's just where you are right now. Whether your natural reflex is to focus on position or empowerment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the first C. The first C is consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency. And here's a question you want to ask yourself. Are you the same person no matter who's with you? Mm -hmm. You know, I told you a story, uh, I think it was yesterday. Or the day before, when we saw Ron Carpenter, we went to a marriage conference, <laughs> conference and we saw Ron Carpenter, and you know, we were we were coming outside the hotel, and Kim's like, "There he is." And I, was, I like, like froze up a little. I played it cool though. I don't think nobody knew it but me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I got like excited on the inside because I mean, I really respect the guy, and he's done some things where he doesn't even know me, right? I don't even know him, mm -hmm. right? But as that conference went on, we sat up front. We got as close as we could, right up front. And um, praise and worship went on, and, and words were said, and we were just us. Mm -hmm. We were just being us. We're both expressive people. You know, we were agreeing, we agreed, looking at each other, taking all kinds of notes. And a few people came up to us mm -hmm. and, and said and commented on, you know, how we were. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I think one of the comments was like a dig, thinking that we were being overexpressive because oh, I didn't hear it. we were when we went inside the store. I think that guy, that, but anyway, oh. the, um, so my point was it didn't offend me or didn't bother me. I didn't notice it, but I, I realized at that point that I was just being me. Yeah. That's just who we, I, it, I don't care who it is. Somebody we don't know. I don't care who it is. They say something that cuts through or it's like an aha moment for me. I'm expressive about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for it. So uh, I'm using that as an example. So no matter who's around you, yeah, you know, and we're we're like that all yeah. the time. Just even with our little grandbaby, yeah, they you. they <laughs> that's just how we are. Yeah. He didn't know. I didn't know the gentleman said anything, but he anyway. may not have been. It just may have been how I interpreted it because I was reading it. Yeah, book. but but either way, I use it as an example to just say, no matter where you are, be who you just are. Be you. No matter what anyone else thinks, mm -hmm. it's about consistency. And I have notes and notes from that um, conference, conference, and we've used and them we to still help. Use yes, them. Yes. <laughs> and we still use them to help some others mm -hmm. and each other. Right. right. Still today. Right. Um, so it was what it was about empowerment to us. So consistency, be who you are. Uh, the next one is choices. The next C is choices. Um, so <laughs> don't make decisions based on how they benefit you. 
I mean, do you make decisions? Sorry, do you make decisions on how they benefit you, or do you make decisions on how they benefit others? And that's a tough one. Yeah. Because that would depend. <clears throat> There's a balance. There's a balance. Mm -hmm. You just need to have it. Right. If yours is all about you, and we talked about this, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was on a recording yesterday or not. <laughs> But if you, t if you are only focusing everything on your own personal needs, then you're not really influencing many. Right. right. Yeah, you're taking the, all your influence and influencing yourself. Right. And, <laughs> and, and in essence, what you're doing at that point, you're not living fulfilled. But really, you're not, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to go church on you, you're not glorifying God. That's true. Because the Bible says, uh, 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 God is glorified in our good works. Mm-hmm. So he's predestined us to do a thing and, and, and gifted us, equipped us to do that thing. Mm -hmm. When we don't do that thing to our maximum ability and offer it freely to others, to, to, to the cosmos around us, then we're not glorifying him. Mm -hmm. And earth, and what is it? It's groaning and moaning. What's that scripture? Mm -hmm. Waiting. Waiting on tiptoe. Right. Mm -hmm. It's waiting for us. Waiting for whatever it is that God has given you to give. Right. So your gift, we, you've heard this before doesn't belong to you. It's just used through right. you for others. Oh, that's good. So that's why you have to make sure that your choices are benefiting others. I would say it like Medea, but benefiting, <laughs> benefiting others right. um, and not just yourself. Right. That can be very selfish. Right. So I'm going to say one more thing about that and move on because we want to get the time. Uh, and you can look this up. This guy named Stephen Covey, and he talks about big rocks and little rocks. Um, so, um, Kim talked about that's tough with the choices mm -hmm. because you still got to make sure your needs are met. Mm -hmm. You still got to make sure that you're growing and glowing, um, so that you can impact others, right? So uh, you, when you're making those choices, I try to make those choices around big rocks, mm -hmm. meaning a big rock is something that is not just affecting that one thing I'm doing. It's affecting a whole bunch of things around it. Mm -hmm. So I make decisions to do things that are not just going to impact the work I need to get done, but I understand how that work is affecting this over here and that over there and that over there. And those are the things that I devote my most of my attention to. Yeah. So choices. You make decisions based on how they benefit you okay. or others. So right. consistency and choices. Number three. Credit. <laughs> um, are you quickly... I don't know what that is. Um, oh, that's a semicolon. Do you, are you, I, I spoke this one out. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Credit. Are you quick to recognize others for the efforts when you succeed? Mm. Do you give credit where it's due? When you succeed. When you do something well. Mm -hmm. That is so important. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done something, you've supported somebody, you worked with them, you helped them build some things, and then they get up to talk about it, and they never even mention any of the work that you or the team has done? That is what this question is asking. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you quick to acknowledge the teamwork or acknowledge others for the things that you do, for the things that you come up with? Um, if I can just talk really quick about when I do my Ami's World, my whole focus on Ami's World is to promote the gifts in children. So it started one way with me just teaching everything. And now it's moving towards the children are teaching and my face is seen less and less. Right. And the reason for that is I just want to be behind it to push. Um, you might hear my voice on some of the things, but most of the time there are children talking and interviewing. And at the credits on the end, all of their names with every little thing they do, whether they edit a page or sing a song or help me write something or come up with something, I put their names there. I put their pictures there. It is because it's not just, the work does not just happen with you and you alone. And when we start to take all the credit, guess what? Right. Do you already have it? What's that scripture say that you already have your reward? Right, right. You have it now. Right. So you're supposed to also esteem others. What, higher? Yes, than even yourself. So think about that. It's so important. Right. To make sure that you are mentioning the people who are supporting and working with you. Help to encourage them. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another quick example that's more that's applicable uh, in, in this house. Let me give in this house. So I didn't ask him permission, so hopefully she don't slide me. So, slide me? <laughs> years ago, years ago, I'm talking years ago, 16, 17 years ago, um, 
my mindset was way more misogynistic and I was way more self-centered and I looked at what I was doing and not what everyone else was doing. I was way more positional than empowering. And so it came to some things that had to do with finances in the house and I was talking about what I did, what I did, what I did, what I did, what I did. Well, one day, um, you know, Kim said back to me, well, I do this, 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 and this, right? So I didn't pay much attention to what she said because I was already in a role, you know, was already, my, my ego was already leaning forward, right? And so I was top heavy and, and forward bobbing. But, but um, we had, uh, uh, we were cleaning up. The, the kids were cleaning up and I, I was seeing like their laundry. I was seeing the stuff that they had. And I realized that I didn't buy any of that stuff, right? And it was like an aha moment to me that, um, you know, I was taking credit for everything that was happening in this house. We didn't have much, but I wasn't the only one inputting into the house. And that, that aha moment to me said, you know, Newt, shut your mouth and, and, you know, honor what everyone is doing. You know, this is, this is a partnership. It's a team. And none of this would happen. You know, it can't happen unless we all do uh, what we're doing. So I just want to give you that example because... Sometimes when we talk about, you know, get recognizing others for efforts uh, when we succeed, we don't think about the, we don't think about our everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of separate it, you know, with work or business or some other accolade, community service or something. Like those kids that are making the beds in the morning and right. sweeping your floor and washing your dishes. Parents, acknowledge that. Right, right. My kids do this. My kids did that. Keeping I don't have to. Clean, right. Yeah, just right. acknowledge it. In front of them so they can hear. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the next one. Um. Number four, the fourth C is character. Character. Do you work harder at your image mm. or for your integrity? Wow. Just That's be quiet for a second. <laughs> Do you work harder for your image or for your integrity? Now, remember, integrity is doing the next right thing mm -hmm. when no one's looking. Nobody's watching you. So, is your focus more on what people see and think of you, mm. or just, I want to do the next right thing. Mm -hmm. Understanding that that next right thing is planting seeds in the ground that no one can see, but eventually something's going to grow, mm -hmm. right? That not only everyone can see, but that you can eat from. Mm -hmm. Later on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So we've got consistency, choices, credit, Character. character and the next one is well, credibility. <laughs> uh, do you recognize? Have you recognized uh, that credibility is a victory, and it's not a gift? Credibility is a victory, not a gift. Meaning this: it's something you've worked for. Mm -hmm. It's something you've earned. It's something that that uh, um, when you cross that line, it's a win. Mm. I've gotten credibility. Mm -hmm. Look! Look what! Look what I! Look what I've won! Look what I've earned! Mm -hmm. It's it's not something that's just given to you. Mm -hmm. The difference between the paycheck that I earn and and you know the the, the tie you gave me. Mm -hmm. You know I, I didn't work for that tie. You decided to give it to me. What do you mean by the tie? So I'm just saying the tie. I, I mean a tie like a gift. You know, oh, okay. Like a okay. Father's Day gift for somebody. Okay. Somebody give me a tie, a bottle of cologne, right. you know, something like that. You know, some socks. I like all those things, right? And, and, mm. and, 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 I mean, they mean a lot to me. Um, but they gave it to me. I didn't work for it. Mm. I didn't go pick it out. I didn't stand there and say, well, I have this color shirt, this color pants. They didn't have to. Yes, they didn't have to. Right. It was given to me. Just appreciate it. And, and I appreciate the gift. Yeah. The gift, there's a place for a gift. Thank you very much. But... The shirt and the tie that I went, that I worked for and paid my money and went to get, you know, and bought, it, I, I bring it back home, you know, it's, it's a different meaning. Yeah. It's a different thing. So credibility is that thing you worked for. Mm -hmm. It's a victory. It's a win. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a goal. It's something you set to get from someone. It's another way to look at it is when you, um, your kids want you to buy them something. Mommy, will you buy me this? Mommy, will you buy me that? And you say to them, no, I'm not going to. But they save their money and they have enough. And then you take them to the store and they buy it for themselves. Right. It means so much to them right. because they've done it themselves. Right. And you taught them something. That's when it means more. 
when you've worked hard for it. Right. It's like you worked hard for that degree. You worked hard to buy that house. You worked hard to, to paint or to build some things in your home. That thing that you worked hard to do for yourself, you it, it is a victory. Right. It's like, wow, I yeah. did that. So because, and it, 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 taking Kim's example, so you had the, the, the child that bought the thing from the store, took the money, they had a goal. Mm -hmm. So they pictured that thing first. That's what I want. What for whatever reason, I want that thing. Mm -hmm. Then they went back and did what was necessary. Yeah. So they can get that thing. And that's a victory. That's credibility. It's it's something that's set. It's a point that you're, mm -hmm. you're trying to, to get. And then you put the work in. Yeah. To earn it. To it means get so it. much. Right. So So it's not just giving. Yeah, what we're trying it's a to victory. Right. So congratulations and congratulate yourself when you do things like that. Right. So those five were consistency, choices, credit, character, and then credibility, which is hard work. All right, All right we're focus on speed, stability, and strength. So we're going to start right out with a low job. Low job. So again, say it every day, keeping that core tight, kind of sucked in a little bit. Kind of tilt those hips, chin tuck, so your chest lifted, right? So just kind of keep moving. For us, we, our feet aren't even four. Yeah, you're not just shuffling back and forth your legs. So I want you to turn to your left. Three, two, one, hop, hop, turn, hop, hop, turn. Turn, turn, turn. So you want to keep your pace up. One, two, three. <laughs> I keep going in different directions. That's all right. I switched them so he that I didn't tell me we were turning. So I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> one, two. One. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, see so my add a hook. Crazy. We're gonna do the same thing with hook. So it's like hey. All <laughs> right. Turn. <laughs> one, two. Okay. So remember, keep that chin tucked. Head neutral spine, so you don't want to lurch your neck too much. Keep the core tight, so we're going to go a little lower. And guys, I'm going to go slower. I just am today. Same thing. I'm trying to keep my core tight. Head looking forward. Three, two, one. So now we're just going to front job. Kim's keeping her feet down. I'm just lifting mine up a little bit. I just get on my toes. You should be breathing. That should have looked real ugly. <laughs> I know mine was crazy. I know mine always does. That's all right. We're about to go into up and over. Right? If you can't go over, just go up and down. So, so you want to get your knee as high as you can. And keep it there. If you can't get it this high, then take it a little lower. If you can get it higher, go higher. Over, up, in. Good job. Good pace. Again, body's up, core is tight, you're on your toe, using that calf, switching those arms. Head nice to the front. Just moving. There you go. Good job, you guys. Good job. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Open up your feet. I'm sorry, I'm just going to stretch it. Oh. Push your hips forward, chest high. I'm trying to stay still. Two, one, switch sides. Woo! My balance is off today. Three, two, one. So this is down, back, and burpee. Kim will show you the modified move. And we're just going down, back, up. burpee, kick. Down, kick, kick. Down. Lay out, kick, kick, down, leg kicked out, kick, kick, 
So when you're kicking up, you're lifting your leg up straight. You're not like kicking out, not bending your knees. You're putting that weight in your core when you're lifting up. Down, back, burpee. Bring it up. Good job, good job. Almost there. Go with your pace. Good job. Good job. Keep it in the core and keep your right. body safe. You got one more in you? Good job. Walk it out. All right. We're going to a stretch. Hip stretch. Ooh. Try to get as low as you can. Stretch and stabilize. Push that butt back. Focus. Spread your toes. Bring it up. Good job. Here's the tough side for me. All right, you ready? Hop and hook. Ready? Hop, hook. We're just shuffling our leg back and forth, our feet, like kickball change almost. So on that hook, I want you to twist that hip. Keep your body erect, core tight. Head and eyes to the front, chin tucked. When you do that hook, you should feel that in your lat, in your upper back. And you should feel it kind of stretching a little in your oblique muscle. And when you jump up like that in the middle, you're using your core. Hey, told you. We're 50 and above, but you don't have time to do one thing at a time. Always do more than one exercise that focuses on more than one body part. Two, one. Feet wide, lunge. So I want you to sit into your heel with this back leg. So you're kind of pushing back with that back leg. Here, now we're going to go to the other side. See how I'm not leaning forward. I'm kind of pushing, putting that weight here. Stretching my inner thigh and pushing back. Come to the center, roll yourself up, be safe. Two, one, all right, back to the cardio, no cross jack. One, two, we're just crossing over. Now it's important that you keep your body tall on this. For those of you who don't modify, we're not jumping, we're just crossing that leg, we'll cross the other one. Shoulders are low. Core's tight. Neck is long. You're not turtlenecking. Let your body relax. Breathe and move as fast as you can. Your feet are crossing. Cross those feet, working that core, working that lower back, engaging those hip flexors, staying on your toes. Almost there. Four more. Four, three, two, one. Back to that. We're going back to a stretch. Hip flexor stretch. Sorry, guys. Back leg straight. Body tall. Right? That back leg straight, you're squeezing that black glute. So you're feeling it in that front uh, hip flexor. Come on up. Switch legs. Chest high. Shoulders down. Neck long. Focusing on the spot on the wall. Feel it in there. Feel it right there. Ready? Bring it up. Left, right, hop. Uh, left, right, knee. So, <laughs> I can't talk. I'll lose. So, it's like this. We're this. One, two, step, three, four, step. Five. March, march, step, step. March, march. Body tall. Resist the urge to lean over. You're going to want to lean over. Keep that core tight. <laughs> Sorry, I got off rhythm. See what happens when you turn 50 something? You start losing the rhythm. Well, maybe some of us. This was about moving.
Body tall. Almost there. Four. Three. Two. One. I lost me. Almost kept me. Now you're gonna bring one knee up. Hold that knee. Hold that knee. If you do two legs, do two. You can do one, push it out. Bring it to the other side. Core tight. Focus on the point. Bring it up. Stretch that. Bring it down. Easy. One knee easy. This side should be better this time. And this side should be better this time. Ready? I'm gonna do a down squat cross. So it's like this, it's like one, two, one, two, three, four. 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 One, two, there you go. Try to keep up. You gotta go slow and go slow. So what is my focus? My focus is on those two dips. I'm tightening my legs. Tighten. Tighten. Here you go. Core tighten. Yeah. One, <laughs> two, one, two, three, four. Last one. One, two, three, four. Left over right. Old school stretch. Keep your back flat. Go down as far as you can. If you can only go this far, it's cool. If you can go farther, keeping that back leg straight. Raise it up. Switch legs. Back, back straight. Chin in neutral spine. Hold it. Roll it up. Three, four. Shake it out. We're going to Heisman cross. So we're going to go left, right, forward, and back. So it's like this. One, two, hop. One, two, hop. Front, ha, back. La, hey, hey. That's it. Spike a pose. That was the football player's name. Wilbur right? Montgomery. Yeah, I was going to say he was the Heisman dude. If you're from Philly, back in the day, Wilbur Montgomery. They used to say, Montgomery style. So we're about to add our hands in. Oh, so mine looks a little different. One. Or gone. <laughs> it actually doesn't. I'm so, not sure what I'm doing here. Let me just stick to the movements. So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to keep your, your back straight. You're not humping down. I don't lost where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, I've gotten confused with this movement. Sorry, guys. Try to keep the back straight. <laughs> you can wave your arms like Three, this. two, one. We're going to a flat back stretch. Bring it down. Raise it up. Four, three, two. One more of those. Feet wide. Back stretch. Flat back. Push that butt back. Head forward. Ah, feel that one. That's a good one. Bring it up. Four, three, two, one. All right. Crisscross jump. Crisscross jump. Tiptoe, crisscross, tiptoe. Hold on. Raise. Raise. So you're just crisscrossing, just springing up off the balls of your feet. It's not much to it. So make sure your legs are crossing. Resist the urge to cheat on the cross. Actually make them cross. Shoulders back, chin tucked, body tall. So we're about to add a side hip to it. So it looks like this, half tuck chunk. Woo! We lift our leg. Let's see if I figure out how to do this. So it's one, two, raise. One, two, raise. Hmm, all the wrong There you go. Good job. Go with your pace, you can go faster, you can go slower. Now your key is side. keeping your body tall. Three, two, one. I don't think I did that right. Going back to that hip flexor, hip flexor stretch. A little too fast for me this morning. Bend that front leg, straighten up. When you bring your body back, keep that back leg straight. 
You stretch that hip flexor. Real good for that hip flexor. Switch sides. Same thing. Push that leg back next straight. Four, three, two, one. Slow the quick jab. So it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. You see me stretching? Now I'm in the squat. Just lean over. Lean over. Squat. Lean. Lean. Squat. Now it's like a sumo squat. So you're not leaning forward on the squat. You're just going straight down. Like a sumo wrestler. Knees going out. Toes tracking over your knees. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. Just like an active recovery here. Stretching those back muscles and lat muscles you've been using all week. Now you can go faster or slower. I wouldn't go too much slower than this time. One more. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring yourself up. Sure. Take it back low. Back to that sumo squat. Push those hands out. Keep your head neutral spine. Don't lean your head up. Head neutral spine. Bring it behind your back. Push down. Keeping that weight in those thighs for a minute. Stand up. Kick it out. Less than 10 minutes. Right? But we're going to step it up on you. Wow, Frida. You ready? Up and over. Ready? Up. Remember that move? I like to get over the move. So your, folk, your knees should have to go a little higher now. You should feel that in your core a little more. You can go slower if you need to. So I focus like 20 feet in front of me out on the ground. That makes me keep my chin tucked, my chest high. And I'm putting this work in my core. And I'm swinging my arms. Give me some power behind it. My, my calves are working. My lungs. You're almost there. You're almost there. Got to think strong. That's right. Keep the shoulders low. Neck long. Don't turn your neck on me. Fight to keep your body erect. Three, two, one. Burpee, kick. Kim's got the modify. Now you're working here. You're working on this one. You work on that kick. Now when you go down on that burpee, I don't want you to bend forward and put your hands down and then go back. I want you to bend down, butt low, hands on the ground, then the burpee. Use that core all the way. Keep the head high. That's something I have to fight to do. That's right. Move at your pace. I'm dogging it today. I'm supposed to go a little faster. But this is what I got. Keep that heel out. Point that heel out when you lift that foot. Woo. Good work, good work, good work. Almost done. Almost there. Three, two, one. Side. Woo, remember that. You remember that. Turn that leg, that toe is pointy. Use your whole body up and push. I know you want to take a break. <laughs> Breathe. Slow down. Breathe. That's it. Here's your break. One, two, jump in. Huh. That's how you take a break. That little two seconds just fixed you. You're fixed. You got four more. Three, two, one. Cross jack. Here's some work for you. Now again, move at your pace. Keep your body tall. Shoulders long. Shoulders low. Neck long. Core tight. Make sure you're crossing those legs. Now you see my head. See how I'm looking up? Resist that. Bring it down right there. That's something I have to stay focused on. Woo! That puts everything in neutral spine and engages your core and keeps you safe. Come on. We got about 15 seconds on this. 
Keep it up. Keep it up. That's it. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Yeah. Three, two, one. All right, back to the hop. Ready? Go. <laughs> one, two. Use that core when you lift those knees. Don't just throw your knees. That's it. Put it in your core. Put it in those hip flexors. Put it in your calves. Focus on the spot. Woo! Keep it moving. I lost track. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Walk it down, shake Look at that body you're building. Look at what you're doing for yourself. Three, two, one. Now squat push ready. It's down tuned into cross. One, two, one, two, three. One, Tighten them legs when you come up. Squeeze those legs in that butt. That's it. Down hips forward. Down hips forward. There you go. I'm getting tired, y'all. We got less than five, guys. But I'm gonna keep going. Half down, up, go. Down, up, down, up. Go. There you go. Hang on. That's it. They might look ugly, <laughs> but keep moving. One more. That's it. Give yourself two seconds. All right, now, highs me. Front, back, side. Put this in your core, you guys. Strike the pose. Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. Knee, lower back. Three, two. Now add the clap. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keeping that back straight. Hey, nice up. Five, four. <laughs> All right, walk Almost there. Three, two, one. Walk it out. Crisscross hop. Woo! Crisscross hop. We're on our tiptoes. One foot. You the other one. And then pull up. Use the core instead. Use that core when you lift. Yeah. I'm back in. Whew. Keep it moving. Your body right. Woo. Work doesn't start till you get tired. Now we're ready. Up there. Up there. Up there. Walk it out. We're gonna finish off. Step over, leg lift, step over. So two, one, two, three. One, you got jazz. One, three. two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. I'm a little slow on the go, guys. That's right. Sumo squat, back high. See that squat? I'm not leaning forward. I'm going straight up. Putting that weight in my, in, the, in my hands, into my butt. I done lost, I'm talking. Here we go. Uh. Woo, I'm so tired of that. That's it, that's it. 
Tuck those hips. Put it in that core. Up. Up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Walk it down, guys. Stretch it out. To the flat back. Down as far as you can go. Step back into your plank. Come to the upper dog. Back to plank. Bring your feet up. Stand up. Roll up. Hands up high. Back to another flat back. All the way down. Come back to that plank. Good plank. My planks don't look so good. Kim's looks much better than mine. Feet just a little lower than wide. Your shoulder wide. Push back into that downward dog. Yeah. Step it up. Stand up. Roll up. Give me three exhales. That's it. Thank you for another day. God, we thank you for the ability to, thank you, to live, move, have our being this day. If you want to do an extra, extra cool down, you can. Um, and it will be like a motion cool down. You know, active cool down, side to side. Side to side. I forgot to cool down, you guys. I was ready to go. Well, listen, Frida, do what I did. All of the lowercase, the lower, um, what are they called? Modified. The modified ones. And whenever you're feeling dizzy, just stop. stop. And I'll type in those six things. Right? Now we're going to do that calf, I mean the thighs, side to side. Cooling down now. Two. Three. Four. One, two, quite a stretch to feel a little better now. Three, because you worked them today. Four, now you're just going to hold this side. One, two, three, four, other side. One, two, three, push that hip forward. Let it down light. Don't just let it drop so you don't hurt your lower back. You guys want to do the, um, the, the, the hip. Uh, Hip stretch, so it's real quick. One, both sides. Two, three, four, four more. One, work the glute. Two, you should feel better each time. Three, four. Now we're gonna hold this side. Do what you gotta do to hold it. Praying hands always seems to help in staring straight. <laughs> For me, Wide hands works. Some people can look down, some people can look out. On this side, I look down, on the other side, I look out. Bring it up. Those look ugly for me because my lower back and my hip flexors are super tight. All right. You guys, I think that's enough. You think it's enough? Yeah, I'm going to type this in for you, um, those words. So I'm going to type them in now. My personal, I can. My sure personal favorite is this. coming down, pushing my legs out. Keeping my back straight. It's my personal favorite here. Let's see how to do it. I come to my knees. Well, add them to the page. Re-engage my spine. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, roll it up. And I'm done. Thank you, God. Woo! For another day. <laughs> You're better to live, move, have my being in you. Thank you Jesus. I thank you that I'm commanding my day. To move things and obstacles out of my way. Yes, Father. That I'll be able to accomplish that which you have me to accomplish so that I'm empowering someone else. Oh, there it is. In Jesus' name. You guys, day 16, was it 16? What's the day? 17. 17. Day 17. Or, or 18 for. In the books. Day 17 in the books, make it a great day or not. The choice is yours.